Hey, good evening. Thank you for checking out this new video here at the Museum Modeler channel. This is going to be a quick unboxing of the new Tacom, 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 I have no idea how to pronounce it, but it's the 135th scale St. Shimon late model. Um, this company is, is new to the scene, but they're specializing in World War I armor, and from all I've heard, their stuff is just fantastic, top-notch straight out of the gate running. These guys are doing great stuff and I'm really excited about this. I picked it up at my uh, local hobby shop with a gift card that I received for the holidays. So thanks mom. And um, we're just gonna take a look at this and see what's inside. Now a quick disclaimer, if you've, uh, if you've read my Facebook page or my blog, you know that I'm not an armor guy, but I want to be an armor guy. I'm, uh, I'm definitely into the ships and the aircraft. I've tried a few armor builds. I've only finished one but I'm really excited about this. Also, with this being the uh, centennial of the First World War, uh, I have a little bit of extra motivation to complete a World War I tank. In fact, on uh, the recent blog post uh, from the Sprue Cutters Union, uh, we looked at what we want to do in 2015, and two of my uh, responses were more World War I and more armor. So this kills two birds with one stone. And with that said, let's go ahead and open this up. Now, this is actually a true unboxing. This is still sealed. Just picked it up this afternoon. Sometimes, uh, you know, you cheat a little bit. You look in the box beforehand and get familiar with the products, learn a little bit of what you want to say. None of that has gone on here. This is 100% first time I'm ever seeing it, first time you're ever seeing it. I did a little bit of research on the St. Shimon beforehand, though, just so I can become kind of familiar with the topic. Honestly, I got it because I like the way it looks. Um, it's ugly as heck, but it's the First World War, so let's take one. All right, opening up the box. Put that there. Okay, so you've got a number of screws in thick and sturdy brown styrene. It's like a tan color, I guess. Uh, one thing I've heard about this company is that they limit the number of pieces you get, making it a fairly simple build. That seems to be the case, because here is the entire one-piece hull, well, upper hull at least. And you can see one of the things that made the uh, St. Chamond of the late model here is the sloped roof. Oh, sorry. Sloped roof over here uh, to prevent uh, satchel charges from being dropped on top, and hopefully this would keep them from doing so and they'd roll off. Uh, I've seen pictures that showed that wasn't entirely successful, but good idea, right? Uh, thick rivets. Let me hold this up. In fact, let me cut the bag open here. Just so you can see what I'm talking about, not just take my word for it. It's sturdy plastic. That's, that's good stuff. The rivets are large and thick. But remember, this is 1 35th scale, so it needs to be large and thick. Everything there seems to be in scale. There's no interior detail. Um, this tank has no interior detail. So for those of you looking to do a really crazy vignette, you've got a lot of scratch building ahead of you. As I'm new to armor, um, this is going to be a closed up build, so no worries there. All right, you got two mirror screws here. Uh, drop my scissors. Let's see here. This looks like some of your suspension pieces, and some of your gears. This tank had a complicated and yet simple suspension system. Uh, there really were only uh, two main drive gears on each side, the number of running wheels. These are single piece, which is nice. You're not going to have that seam line going down the middle uh, horizontal surface. Really nice machine guns, too. I'll hold that up there so you can see that. Let me give you a white background. There we are. The barrels are solid. They are not. Um, they don't have a hole in them, but you can fix it with a pin vise or a hot needle. I've heard a lot of that interior detail will be lost, which is a shame, but that's what you get if the tank is going to be closed up. And the springs, the suspension springs, are looking like they're in scale, too. I know there were a lot of complaints about this company's 1 16th FT-17 tank, with the springs being a little bit wonky, but I bet with some weathering and good paint, you can make those look completely in scale. Next sprue is 
Miscellaneous hull sides. Oh, you've got a figure. Yeah, let me open that up. Another thing this company is doing is they're adding figures with their 135ths, kind of as a bonus. Based on the box art, I'm willing to bet this is a French gentleman with a beret smoking a pipe. And, yep, that's what it is. So, it's beret, so he's French. And, oops, there's the pipe. That's good detail. I, uh, I'm really not a figure guy, but kind of like armor, it's one of those things that I want to try. And since this came with it, I think I'll give it a go. Just to see what that's all like. I mean, why not, right? So. All right. Running out of sprues here. More miscellaneous hull pieces. These are the barrels that were added. There you go, where my finger is. These were added to the front of the tank undersides for crossing ditches, because uh, the tank was so big and so long, it would just get itself you know, stuck on each end of the trench there. And so they added these barrels on the front and rear undersides so that it could help the tank roll up and over the edges of the trenches. And those are good, they look like wood, which is nice. This sprue is probably all suspension. I see lots of uh, what we say in the ship modeling realm, fiddly bits. We got lots of pieces in there. There's some more hull sides or undersides. Here are the tracks. Now this is going to be a bit of an adventure for me. Since my only other armor build was a Tamiya Panzer II, which had rubber or vinyl tracks. I have never even looked at workable tracks. In fact, this is the first time I've ever seen workable tracks on a sprue. And I'm excited. Now, I will say that these tracks, they're supposed to be cast. They were the prototype, they were cast. And that's got some good cast texture to it, which is nice. Of course, at 135th scale, there's really no excuse for lacking cast texture if you're supposed to have it. As far as these pieces, I'm sure that they have something to do with the actual track components, because these, these move, they're workable. How they go together, though, I don't yet know, but we'll see. Okay, adventure in instructions. These are big and colorful. Actually, my first impression is these look like Lego instructions. Got their very own sealed bag. Now I've heard that this kit comes with five paint schemes that were actually chosen by the guys over at Mickey Menes because uh, they issue a they have a World War One paint uh, selection available in their own line. These are really detailed paint markings, full color, and all sides, top, left, right, front, rear. These are. Oh, well, this is the chronological listing here, where it's how this unit looked leaving the factory, if it was counter battery support, this is a particular unit, the third battery des group, colonial artillery group from early 1918. And these are MIG color callouts. You know, it's funny, one of the uh, other goals I had for 2015 was to try um, better washes, and that included MIG. So if I'm going to try MIG washes this year, I might as well try MIG paints, too. So that'll be fun. Instructions. Oh my gosh, wow. Well, first off, you've got CAD drawings in the rear here. So it's 41 steps. Uh, some of these are repetitive. So wheel wells make 16 of, of those road wheels, etc. Not quite sure yet what I am looking at because, again, it's my first uh, take home or to come tank kit. But it's exciting, and the suspension looks a little bit complicated. <laughs> but why not, you know? This thing had a complicated suspension in the real world, so why not give it one? Oh, goodness. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, I've heard there's a way to actually make this fully workable, not just with the tracks, but also with the springs, 
so you can have it sitting on uneven terrain and have an accurate you know shape to the to the, the undercarriage so we'll see how that goes I love how it just looks like a boat maybe that's why I like this one because it's just an obnoxious large yacht tank but it's gonna be fun and finally we have some decals I must have heard wrong because there are not five color callouts there are two and then these generic ones here and decals yeah there are two of these here the pass come on and the law be gone I've been to France once I don't speak French but I'll show you here are the decals these are the two markings that have nose art in fact I bet that's what this is these are the nose art options as well as the no nose art options so yeah there are there are quite a few of these here which one will I build I don't know I'll look for what's most historically significant and or interesting to me and to the museum modeler mission of building less often seen yet historically significant builds and we'll go from there. There'll be uh, build updates on the Facebook page, which is at facebook.com slash themuseummodeler. And then full write-ups are always on the blog, which is at um, themuseummodeler.wordpress.com. If you haven't looked at the blog lately, I've got several new photo albums up. Um, recently finished a 172nd scale P51, and I finished a year ago a 148th scale uh, ME262 U4 with the 50 caliber gun in the nose, and I got an album of that up, as well as a continuing review of the ongoing saga of the USS Hornet, which is soaking up all of my time, but I'm loving every second of it. All right, well, this has been a quick review of a tank, a rare tank review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that if you've built this, uh, feel free to comment. I'd love to hear what you what you think, and if you've never built it, comment anyways, too. You know, we're part of a big community here, so let's all band together as modelers. All right, thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time at the Museum Modeler channel. Take care.